She's considered one of the most exciting stars among solo pianists. At the age of four, she had already performed one of Chopin's mazurkas for a children's concert. She performs with some of the world's top orchestras. Natasha Paremsky joins us now in the studio. Hello, Al. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So how did this journey begin as a child? Do you have any memories of uh, a turning point or how the piano uh, spoke to you as a child? I don't have a memory of when I started because I started so young. So young. <laughs> so young and so immediately. And actually, I, I don't have a memory when I didn't play the piano. So oh. that is how long, that is how, how long I've been playing and practicing and but my turning point when I knew that I actually wanted to play the piano as a professional was when I was eight years old and my mom took me to see a concert by my idol at the time Evgeny Kisin he's an uh -huh. amazing pianist and I was not able to play the piano for a few months because my parents had just immigrated to the United States and I didn't know how much I missed it until I saw his recital Mm -hmm. And when I saw his recital and the energy that it had, I knew immediately that not only did I want to start playing piano again, I wanted to be on stage just like he was. And I think that for me was a real turning point. I was yeah. eight years old at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us about your 2016 album, Natasha. Yes, that, um, that is actually my debut album that has been re-released on the new label by Steinway and Sons. Mm -hmm. And the really cool track on it, for me, because it's the most recently recorded track, is Islamay by Balaikirif. And it was recorded on this new Steinway system called Spirio, where I actually, when I play something, the piano records my touch. And they're able oh. to then take that and play it on another Steinway piano. So if you go to the Steinway basement in New York, right now, and you ask for a Spirio piano, you mm. can ask for me to play Islamé oh, wow. for you right there, as though I'm, I'm not, I can be in Istanbul right now, but someone in New York can be hearing me play oh, Islamé. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's this really incredible technology, and they actually recorded my ghost playing Islamé. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and so it's like this really eerie thing. When I first watched it back, I was completely startled because it's like, it's me, but it's not me, but it's me because it's, it's you can see the keys moving and everything just how I played it. And it's this really, really neat thing. It's the last track on that album. Mm -hmm. And as far as everything else is concerned, I think that it's kind of showcases the pieces that I love the most and they're tied together by a piece that was written for me by a very uh, famous composer in America, Gabe Kahane, and mm -hmm. that was his first opus um, as a classical musician. He has roots in bluegrass and jazz. And I decided to tie the Brahms Second Sonata to get, and the Prokofiev Seventh Sonata together with this uh, piece that was written for me because I thought they, they were such interesting, it made for an interesting sort of musical sandwich. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the really neat thing is the Spirio track. Right. Yeah. It sounds pretty amazing. Do you, um, do you enjoy making albums? Like this one has a track that's actually written for you or would, do you prefer being on stage with people or do you have a preference? To be perfectly honest with you, I, uh, I prefer that if there is a recording that it is of a live performance uh. because I think that the energy always changes. In fact, there's a kind of lack of energy when you're just alone in a studio with a microphone. It seems somehow cold. It's almost like I don't really know who to play for. You right. know, when mm -hmm. I played in Istanbul on Saturday, I felt like I was playing for my friends here in Istanbul that I met two years ago, Nazan, and my mom happened to visit Istanbul. So I felt like I was playing for the people that I knew. and. To me, that's just much more warm, and it's and I feel like I'm actually telling a story to someone, right. as opposed to telling it to this cold, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> dead thing. You also like to play in unusual places, not concert halls. Uh, yeah. What's the reason behind that? 
Uh, because I think, uh, especially when you, uh, in today's age, you know, classical music is not something that, first of all, everybody can afford. And second of all, that people can be exposed to. Mm -hmm. the, there are many areas that I've played in all over the world, most recently in the state of Alaska, which is really kind of a different country. Yeah. You know, in America there are 50 states, but really Alaska is another country. And sure there is. are areas in Alaska where people have n never been exposed to classical music. In fact, they don't even have plumbing as such. And, I mean, it really, it's, it's a whole other level of existence. Sometimes they will, they will kill a, a big moose and mm -hmm. they will feast off of that moose for a week out in February because they can actually keep the meat out in February. Outside. That's how cold it gets. Yeah. So these people, they can't just go and to a symphony concert and listen to a Brahms symphony, let alone a piano recital. Uh, and I think that to me is the most wonderful way to connect with people through music when they haven't heard it and it's new to them. And you won't believe how emotional people get when they hear it for the That's first right. time. And I feel like it's almost like a duty to be able to come to people and you plant seeds with people they they hear something they love so much they want mm -hmm. to come hear it again or they try to seek a way of trying to include that kind of music in their life right. and it's, that to me c can be so much more rewarding than what I do every week mm -hmm. in a concert hall with a symphony without a symphony recital tune music I can see how much that means to you on your face, actually, when you talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for joining us on Showcase. Thank you so much. Thank you.